what we're going to talk about today is two things, and and that is creating a a log of some kind to monitor your progress and what the bird is and what the bird's behavior is, and also to be able to identify what what I call base weight two things. You will need something to create a log on, and it can be anything. Um, day planner. Day planners make great log books. Uh, they're cheap. You can get them at Walmart or wherever, but just a basic little day planner to uh, to write down the information that you need to write down. Um, day planner doesn't work for you. How about a how about a clipboard with uh, just paper is fine, but you do need to keep really really accurate records of your bird's weight and your bird's behavior and performance. And the way that we do this is there are there are a lot of things that affect a bird's behavior. Um, time of day affects the bird's behavior. So, you, so when you're working with your bird, you need to write down the day, the date, and the time of day. Uh, also, the temperature. Uh, birds will, will not be as motivated to hunt when the temperature is warm as it is when it's cold. So you need to write down the temperature. Barometric pressure. If there's a, a low pressure front coming in, the birds know that and they can feel it and then and they will be more motivated to hunt. And then when a high pressure is building in and the birds will be less motivated to hunt, you need to write this down. You also need to write down your observations of the bird's overall behavior. And so when you go to pick up your bird off a perch or when you enter the chamber, don't immediately go pick up the bird. Stop for a moment and, and look at your bird and, and identify how is the bird acting. Is it acting <clears throat> nervous that you've come in? Is it... Um, on the perch and it's leaning forward wanting to get to you so that it can go hunting? Is it uh, aloof? Is it indifferent? Is it anxious? Is it enthusiastic? Um, you need to log these behaviors so that, so that um, <clears throat> when you find yourself in a situation where you're not getting the performance out of the bird that you should get and that you and that you're used to, then you go back and you look at your logs and then you compare. Okay, on this particular day, it was this temperature, it was this time of day, and it, the bird was this weight, and this was the barometric pressure, and this is what the, the winds were doing, and then this is this is the distractions and the things that, that were in the area, and I got this performance. Oh, that's why my bird is not performing because we have got an unusual distraction. Um, maybe uh, a neighbor's dog uh, came by and got your bird all upset. And so it's, it's not behaving properly. Maybe you're out in the field and some idiot on a motorcycle comes racing by uh, and now your bird is disturbed or bothered. <clears throat> maybe your bird hasn't recovered from a bad experience with a stranger while you were out for a walk. You need to log all of this information <clears throat> so that you can go back and then you can diagnose what the situation is and also understand that, you know, today was a tremendous day. The bird was just right on its game. Everything was perfect. It couldn't have gone better. Wonderful. That's a great thing. Uh, now, try to duplicate that. <clears throat> and so it's... it's um, it's a very, very complicated process. So some form of a log is extremely important for every falconer, whether you're like me and you've been doing this for, for over 50 years, or if you're just a brand new falconer with his very, fur, very first uh, red-tailed hawk, which is the best bird for beginning falconers here in North America, <clears throat> please log everything possible. And there's a lot of variables you can't control, but there is a variable that you can control. And, and that is di discovering what is the appropriate weight
for your bird what we call the hunting weight for your bird to be enthusiastic and want to go and hunt quarry whether it's ducks or pheasants or quail or rabbits or whatever the quarry is <clears throat> the the bird won't do that if the bird isn't at the appropriate weight and we call that the fly the flying weight or the hunting weight <clears throat> now how do you get to the hunting weight <clears throat> and this is where a lot of falconers are not being taught <clears throat> how to establish the proper flying weight because again if your bird is too heavy it won't respond it won't chase uh, if your bird is too light <clears throat> it won't re it won't um, respond and it'll be lethargic and a lot of falconers think oh the bird's not responding so let me bring the weight down and the bird's already it you know critically at a critical weight and you bring it down any further the bird's going to die <clears throat> which never has to happen but it happens all the time in falconry <clears throat> because falconers have a tendency of not establishing the proper flying weight now how do you get to the proper flying weight how do you know that how do you, how do you determine where that bird needs to be and what we want to do is we want to fly the bird <clears throat> as heavy as possible but still get the the response necessary so that the bird doesn't just fly away or doesn't die from starvation. <clears throat> and the way that we do this is we establish what we call a base weight. Now, a base weight, <clears throat> you ask, um, oh, you ask 100 falconers, <clears throat> and, and here in North America, 90 of them will tell you, well, the base weight is the weight uh, that the bird weighed when it was trapped. When, when the bird was first taken out of the field and they couldn't be more wrong. That is not the base weight, that's the trap weight. That, that, is, that, that is a time when you have gone out and, and you've trapped your very first bird, preferably a red-tailed hawk, that's the appropriate one. <clears throat> and now you've got this big, beautiful hawk and now it's time to gentle it and go, and go through the training process. And you put all of the equipment on the bird you put, you put the hood, <clears throat> the bells, the jessies. Uh, I even do the transmitter and the swivel. I do all of the equipment on the bird. <clears throat> and then you can place it on a scale and see what the bird weighs. And what that will tell you is um, how healthy the bird is. If you, if you feel the keel right here on the bird and it feels really, really thin, and you weigh your bird, you're going, okay, well, the bird's really thin, and this is the weight, so I know that that's far below what it should be flying at. Uh, if you feel the keel right here, and it's nice and round, and you can't even feel the keel bone, <clears throat> the bird is in really, really good health, and very strong, and maybe a lot of flight muscle, and maybe a lot of fat, and, and so you know that the bird is probably going to have to be reduced a little bit. But we're guessing, we're estimating, we're kind of going maybe, maybe, who knows. Um, there is a much, much better process that, that, is, um, that we can use to identify the, the appropriate weight of your bird. And so uh, trapping weight is, is a good way to go, well, my bird's keel is really thin, okay, that's uh, the bird hasn't been eating very well and it hasn't been feeding itself and and I'm it's probably good that I trapped it because you know the bird probably wouldn't survive another few days without food or the bird is re is doing very very well in the wild and it's catching lots of food and it's very fat and that's all that that does for you it doesn't identify your flying weight it doesn't identify your base weight and so the way to identify the base weight is once you've got that bird, all the equipment is on it. For the next two weeks, you give that bird everything that it wants to eat, just as much food as you can, uh, as it'll take. And so you basically, what you want to do is you want to just basically feed the bird, have food available to it. Every time the bird is on your glove and you're going through uh, the, the process called manning, which is to get the bird acclimated to you and to the environment, you want to take two weeks for the bird to have all that it could possibly want to eat. And you want the bird to feed 
right here off your glove. And, and so basically it knows that in your presence there is always food and it can eat just as much as it could possibly eat. And after after two weeks, and if you want to go, if you're having manning issues and you go three weeks, uh, that's fine. It's not a problem. But you want to go at least two weeks. Once the bird is eaten all that it can eat for two whole weeks, then you want to take that bird and now you want to put him on a scale. And the scale needs to measure at a minimum of quarter ounce increments. Um, I personally prefer uh, uh, a tenth of a gram increments. And, and so you need to weigh your bird. It's eaten all that it's want. It's as heavy uh, and fat as you can possibly get it. Uh, wonderful. Now that weight, that fat weight, as heavy as you could possibly get that bird, that is base weight. Most falconry birds, um, their flying weight is going to be somewhere between 10% below base weight and 20% below base weight. 10 to 20%. Um, seldom, you know, seldom is it less than 10%. If you find 10%, then your bird probably uh, wasn't as full and fat as you could possibly get it. Uh, if you get anywhere near 20%, and you and you reduce reduced the bird's weight by reducing the food you feed it every day you just reduce the amount of food that it gets and so you bring it down a few grams every day until it until it's down to that 10 percent and then you will see what kind of performance that you have is the bird jumping to the glove uh is it flying to the glove is it being um really enthusiastic or is it still a little bit lethargic it's not to be, not really coming to as well as you would like it to okay then let's bring it down 11 percent 12 percent 15 percent but if you get close to 20 percent stop if you get down close to 20 percent and there are some birds i'll be honest with you there are some birds that uh from their absolute fattest you, you got to go down to 20 percent to get them down to a flying weight but but the vast majority of the birds that's not the case and so if you're going you get down to 20 percent i want you to stop and i want you to start over again i want you to feed the bird back up for a couple of weeks give it all the food that it could possibly eat continue to man the bird continue to take the bird for walks continue to introduce the the bird to unique uh, things like automobiles and trash trucks and dogs and horses and you you know uh unique things that could that could bother the bird do all the manning that you need to do uh but bring the birds back weight back weight up again see where that base weight is recalculate and then start bringing the birds weight back down now the problem with most falconers is they see this as a complete waste of time <clears throat> they see this as i want the bird in the field in a week and I want it killing stuff. I want it hunting. I want it catching rabbits. I want it catching ducks and pheasants. Um, but the problem with not following these steps is what you're going to find is, is far too often you just never quite get the bird to where you want it. You never understand the, the, the appropriate weight for the bird, and the bird will not perform oh, properly for you. It's either too light or it's too heavy, and you don't know, and you're just guessing. And this is the point in time where you've been working this bird now for six months. You've caught absolutely nothing. You've wasted an entire six months of, of your beginning falconry career with with virtually no success whatsoever. <clears throat> and you're going, well, it's just a lazy bird. You know, it's it's not a good falconry bird, and it's it's not that it's a bad bird. It's got a bad falconer, and so you have to be you have to establish this base weight, and if you will establish this base weight, um, I don't know anyone that has done this process and done it appropriately, that their bird was not in the field and hunting successfully within a month. But I know an awful lot of falconers that skipped this process and were six months, 
a year, even three, four, five years, and never taken ahead of game because they just couldn't get the bird to the appropriate weight where they get the appropriate performance and they and they basically get rid of the bird that didn't work for them and they get another one and that one doesn't work for them they get another one and it's just a really really bad process to skip acquiring base weight and so to acquire base weight you need a scale and there are lots of scales available uh, and and if you go to the local you know thrift store uh, they have they have uh, oftentimes for two or three dollars uh, nice small gram scales that you can put a perch on and so right now let me show you a few of the scales that I've gotten the different kinds of scales uh, that, I, that I have used over the years this first one right here this is uh, an electronic scale this will this will do grams this will do ounces this will do um tenth of grams it's very big it's very heavy it's got a large perch on it right here and this is the scale that i use for my golden eagle and it'll it'll weigh up to 40 pounds and so if you want a big heavy scale that's a little bit awkward to, to move around but you're weighing you know something very very large and it needs a big scale this is a, a great and you can you can order this off the internet they're they're easy to come by there's lots and lots of different brands of this particular scale and you you basically you have your on off your terra which is what zeroes out the units whether you want grams or or uh ounces and the and the hold to hold the the numbers so that you can read it so that's a, a a really good scale uh, that I use. I use that for my eagle, but it's a little big and a little bit awkward. Not as awkward as this scale right here. Let me uh, couple these over a bit. Show this to you here. This particular scale right here is a baby scale, and this what this baby scale is a two beam counterbalance scale. It weighs a ton. It it has a heavy cast iron base. This is what I used for my eagles for many, many, many years. This scale is actually older than I am. Had a shelf on it that came across the whole thing that you would put the baby on and slide the weights back and forth. And so I took the, the shelf off and put a, a two by four perch on it uh, so that I can weigh my eagles on it. And so that's I've used for eagles for many, many, many years. This scale is probably close to 100 years old. So it's a very, very old, old scale. And it still works perfectly well to this day. And uh, counterbalance scales is something that uh, we use, we've used in falconry a lot over the years. This is a, uh, a, a counterbalance scale. Again, this one is about as old as I am. It's a, a good 50 plus years old. I remember using this this uh, similar scale to this when I was in high school in chemistry class. This was the scale that we used, and again, this this will it will weigh in uh, in uh, a tenth of grams. So, or actually hundreds of grams. Yeah, it's hundreds of grams, and, and so. This is very, very, very precise. The only problem with these counterbalance scales that I don't like is that when you put the weight on them and they're balanced, they, the bird's movement, it just takes the tiniest movement and, and the needle goes up and down. So the bird has to be hooded and that bird has to sit perfectly still on the scale in order for the scale to work properly. And so I don't really recommend these. I've known a lot of falconers that have used them and I've, I've had this one uh, oh my gosh, 40, more than 40 years I've had this scale. And, uh, and it's wonderful uh, for uh, weighing the birds. Again, these mechanical scales, you know, unless you drop them, there's, there's nothing to go wrong. And they'll last literally forever. And talking about forever, here we go. How about this one? And here's another uh, uh, two-beam counterbalance scale. And this particular counterbalance scale is an antique. Uh, I found this at a at a thrift store, and and it, I'm sure it was used uh, in some little mercantile here in in Utah, uh, weighing out 
I don't know, grain weighing out, uh, candy weighing out, something at a small uh, little general store when Utah was still very much a pioneer town. And, and again, it, it's appropriate weight and, and size. Uh, I put the block on, on, onto it for a perch for the birds. But um, so that's, that's very much an antique and it works perfectly well. I don't use it for for falconry very much, but it's a beautiful old scale, and so I I do just have it sit up on a shelf as as a as a decoration, and I find that just really wonderful to have it. the The most common scale used in falconry today are these, and this is your typical grand scale. You, you use these, um, you know, for uh, measuring out uh, food quantities, whatever. It does grams, it does ounces. It's got a, a, a little tea per perch on it. Now, the perch comes off, and that's very, very important that it comes off. I don't know if I can take it off, but you can see right there, it's, it's Velcroed. It's Velcroed right, right into place here. And so the Velcro holds it on very, very securely and keeps the... The perch, and this is a fairly wide one, so it's not easy to knock over. And so when you get a perch, there are scales. There are some really, really tiny ones. And the tiny ones may not be the best choice because they're too light. And if the bird moves, they fall over. And so one with a little more base to it is a little more secure. And with the perch coming off, you can just peel it off. Then you're able to put it in your car, uh, you know, put it in the trunk so it doesn't take up a lot of space. Uh, same idea. Um, but this is actually kind of shows how to be inventive. This particular uh, scale, again, it, it does um, it does uh, grams and it does uh, uh, ounces. Um, it had a glass plate on it, and the glass plate uh, was broken, and it was sharp, and it just had a piece. And I, again, I found this at the thrift store for a dollar, and and the glass plate glued onto the a post you can see right there and so i was able to break the glue bond get the glass plate off and then glue a pvc piece on and make a pvc perch and again uh for you know a dollar and then maybe another dollar's worth of pvc plastic uh for two bucks i've, I've got a perfectly good scale in order to weigh my birds and and to weigh them very very precisely um this is uh, what I used for decades in falconry when I was younger, and this is a spring-loaded scale, and and we you can get uh, used to get these things all the time. Most of the time, when you find these, the problem with them is they are uh, like twenty pounders, and and the the increments are not small enough. This is a five-pound scale. The increments are are quarter ounce. And, or eighth ounce increments, and so, you know, it's it's very precise for what it is. Spring loaded, very easy, all metal, quite durable. You know, these would be considered by most falconers as antiques. This one's this one's probably 50, 60 years old, and still works perfect to this day. And the equivalent to this one, this one does does ounces. This one right here does grams it's exactly the same thing um this i i would bet came from a uh a, a chinese market uh because the the lettering on it is is chinese uh but the numbers are, are perfectly fine they're in grams and so we can certainly use that but this is just a small sample of of the scales that i that i have now you know you probably wonder you know what in the heck why does this guy have so many scales i i like to uh shop at the thrift stores and I get a lot of uh, uh, of things that I can modify and and uh, use for falconry uh, and like like these scales and this gives me the opportunity to do uh, to keep my falconry as inexpensive as I possibly can and and so when I when I'm at the thrift store, if I see a, a, a scale that's a good candidate for a falconry scale for a dollar or two, I'll buy that, and then I'll put it downstairs in the basement. And when I have a 
a young falconer or a new falconer, in case you're not young, a new falconer that decides that they want to uh, get into falconry, and then I can basically hand them a sc uh, scale and say, here, you know, don't go out and spend 50 bucks on a scale. Here's one for free. And so it allows me to to help the, the new falconers continue uh, the process of becoming uh, a, a skilled and, and, and licensed individual. Anyway, so that's the point. And let me recap real quickly for you. Um, keep a log. Nobody has to see the log. It doesn't matter how good your handwriting is. It doesn't matter how good your spelling is. Keep a log. Write down so that you understand um, the date, the time of day, the temperature, the barometric pressure, the wind velocities, and anything that you notice about your bird and the way it's responding. Keep a log. Um, you will find that uh, in my case, you know, I go back 50 years and I can look at some of the old logs that I've done for decades ago, and it is just a treasure to read them. And it brings back memories of the animals that I've had and what we have accomplished. And, uh, and it really starts to bring into to, to a very, very clear focus on, on how falconry is done and how, and how it, you can be successful. So keep a log, really important. And then secondly, understand base weight. Understand that base weight is the weight of your bird when it's as fat as you can get it, give it as much food as it can eat for at least two weeks. And after that two week period of time, weigh your bird. Uh, I per personally uh, think a gram scale is best. Uh, an ounce scale is perfectly fine as long as it's at, at least quarter ounce increments. It's perfectly fine for the for the medium to large size birds of prey. The smaller ones, please stay with the gram scale because you need the accuracy. And then once you've established base weight, then and only then do you want to reduce the bird's weight and you, you get your calculator and understand that the, what the bird's weight is and then you subtract 10 percent and then you and then you subtract 20 percent and then write that down write that down in your log write it down here in your log 10 percent 20 percent you know what the birds and then as you're working with your bird in your log book and you see right across the top what the what 10 percent of base weight is what 20 percent of base weight is and you see how your bird's coming along and it's in its behavior and its performance and everything's going to click for you and you're not going to waste a huge amount of time trying to guess so that's what we want to talk about today uh base weight, uh, and keeping a log, uh, get yourself a scale. You don't have to buy a new one. Uh, you can certainly pick them up at yard sales and, uh, and thrift stores. Uh, and, uh, guys, we're going to do, an, we'll be doing a few more of these. So, uh, hang around with us and, and let's, let's get you started in Falconry the right way. Well, we'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.